and a jolly, jolly good morning to you from a rather overcast, cool Bedford in Bedfordshire on this Saturday morning. And uh, I'm going to go on another little walk around the town here in Bedford um, with the help of the Go Jauntly app. Now, most people that come to Bedford and uh, go for a walk, probably would head towards the River Grey Twos and up and down along there, which is very pleasant most of the time, and um, head towards the Bedford Priory, uh, sorry, Bedford uh, Marina, uh, or towards Kempston, and enjoy being by the waterside. And indeed, when I went onto my uh, trusted Go Jauntly app this morning, that's exactly where it sent me. Uh, I put in for a circular walk from Bedford Railway Station, and it uh, defaults at three kilometres and sends you up towards the river and a little walk along there. And as I increased the distance up to four kilometres, five kilometres, six, etc., it uh, just offered slightly longer walks, walking in the sandy direction, if that helps anybody, um, and then one that uh, where you walk in the Kempston direction. And I increased it up to seven kilometers, and it's given me a completely different walk away from the river. So I'm gonna take that particular walk. One, because I've walked the river many, many, many times in the past. And two, I don't think I've walked around this particular part of Bedford. I've got no idea what there'll be of interest on the way. But uh, the start of the walk has sent me down this little road opposite Bedford Station to a quiet residential area. And I'll take it from there. But it's approximately seven, seven and a half kilometres uh, circular walk back to Bedford Station. So let's go and see where that takes us um, following the Go Jauntly app. So I'm going to take a right hand turn here which heads you towards the town centre and the bus station and in fact in about an hour and a half's time I should come back down this road here and uh, we'll turn back back towards the railway station and the end of the walk. So it becomes a proper circular walk from this point onwards. On Alexandra Road at the moment, uh, just turning off up here towards the town centre. So uh, the, the circular walks essentially just taking me down some quiet residential streets next to some of the main drags here in Bedford, so a little bit quieter than the, uh, the main street back there. An Italian some sort of Italian club. Yeah. Italian bar and club. Just past a Polish one. Go up to Greyfriars now, which uh, is the location of the slightly gloomy looking Greyfriars bus station. Um, there's a police station nearby and uh, a car park. If you're a uh, enthusiast of stagecoach buses, this will be a good place to come. Well, we're just coming up to the 
the road which is known as All Hallows. Sounds nicer than it is. I used to work along here many moons ago in uh, a shop just down there, just past the HSBC bank. Can't actually identify these days which one it actually was. I think I know which one it was, but um, the place where I worked has long since disappeared. And uh, there's something else there now. Just walking up All Hallows, um, right directly ahead now, that's uh, Bedford Prison. And now on Dame Alice Street, approaching Harper Street. Just crossing over the High Street, another place I used to work many years ago down there also long since gone tried to identify the shop i used to work in down there as well uh, what it is now and i think i found it and it's now in a and now an estate agents now we're on to st peter's street st peter's church over there and the uh, almost obligatory street drinkers sat in the churchyard which town am I in? Any, any town UK. It's only eight o'clock on a Saturday morning as well. Now crossing over St Cuthbert Street. While we wait for the traffic, we'll look at and wonder what happens inside the flying cork. And we're now on Kimbolton Road. I believe this walk is going to take us around or possibly through Bedford Park uh, that's uh, shown on that sign there. Uh, but we shall see. I'm certainly enjoying a little walk around a part of Bedford or parts of Bedford I've not walked around for a very long time and um, parts of Bedford I don't think I've ever walked around so it does make a pleasant change from walking up and down the river, which is very nice, it has to be said. And the nicest part of Bedford, in my opinion. However, as with any other place, there are other parts to discover. So hopefully see something of interest this morning. It's Goldington Road there, but we're carrying on on Kimbolton Road up that way. seen that mentioned a few times around this town, Bedford Health Village. I always wondered where it was. Now I know. Right, so still on Kimbolton Road. Probably about a um, mile and a half from the start of the walk now. Houses are starting to get a little bit bigger. A little bit more high end. A few trees along the road. Going to be turning off to the left down here somewhere. Uh, the first turn really in this circular walk well, first major change of uh, direction anyway this is where we turn off onto St Augustine's Road This 
looks to be a very nice, neat and orderly kind of street, has to be said. And it doesn't actually look like parking's much of a problem down here either. On Saturday morning, quite often you find that uh, cars are all over the place because people have returned home for the weekend uh, in the evening on a Friday and nowhere for them to park but down here doesn't seem to be too much of an issue uh, a fair few of these houses although they didn't start off with driveways have kind of converted some of their front gardens into driveways or parking spaces anyway not all of them not enough room really in some of them for those of you that have uh, not heard of the Go Jauntly app, it's the one I use. I'm sure there are others about uh, that do a similar type of job. Um, but what it will do for you is, if you're um, in a particular place, near or far from your home, and you fancy going on a walk, you can just put in, well, it will detect what location you're in. You can put in how much of a walk you want to do in terms of distance and it will come up with a route map for you. As I was saying earlier on, um, Bedford Station, for a, the purposes of going for a walk, it uh, tends to direct you in the direction of the river. So I kept putting in a slightly higher distance and eventually it came up with this particular walk we're on now. And uh, the other thing it does is it does identify all the public footpaths and green spaces that you can walk around and through as opposed to say an A to B um, walking route on something like Google Maps which will tend to just stick to pavements along the side of roads so it's excellent for that and of course it does have an awful lot of actual walks that people have uploaded but the app will create one for you based on your location and how far you want to walk and whether you want an A to B um, walk or a circular walk. A to B's are pretty good if you want to maximise what you see without repetition and uh, maybe get public transport back again. A bus or a train or something to get you back to where you started. Walking between railway stations is quite often quite an interesting walk. Right, I better just refer to the, the app. It seems to have come to a park here directly ahead. Um, given away by the fact it says Park Avenue. And let's see if we're going in there or around it or what we're doing. Right, crossed over Park Avenue and thankfully uh, the app is directed me into this park. And isn't that a great thing to see? Ice cream vehicle only. So it should be parking spot just for ice cream vans and this is Bedford Park. I've never been here before, not that I can remember. And already this looks very nice indeed. There's a map there with uh, what's what in here. We'll see, uh, a, we'll see where I am now. Park Avenue, oh yeah and uh, seems to have some tennis courts, a lake, which we'll have a little walk around in a moment. Uh, pavilion at the park, maybe that's got a cafe in it or something. I don't know. But it's got a stand for ice cream vans. swiftly continues off in the direction of cycling route number seven should you wish to uh, refer to that of course you could uh, take a lot longer spend more time wandering around there in the park sit down and have a rest plenty of seats and so on uh, but the, uh, 
the water, the, uh, the app is now sending me off down here. So, be interested to see what there is to look at down here. <coughs> well, there's a, quite a hill coming up there, um, up Larkway. Interestingly, it does. It works better in the countryside. On the on the map you have on this um, Go Jauntly app, it uh, tells you your elevation above sea level and shows you the lines similar to those on an ordnance survey map. Um, there is actually a little circular line just where these houses are, basically surrounding these houses and where I'm stood now. Uh, which must be a point of uh, equal height above sea level. It doesn't actually say what that height is though. Uh, it won't be much, it's quite a flat part of the country. But, um, yeah, normally, particularly when you're in the countryside, it shows those lines with the actual heights above sea level. Which is just an interesting little factoid. Anyway, I've come to Falcon Avenue now. I'm going to take a left turn. The grassy tree line central section to this Falcon Avenue. Uh, but, uh, on the map, it does actually show a footpath going through there, but it's very, very overgrown, so I don't know if it's uh, actually passable as such. I'm going to stick to the pavement though, just for now. I'm just a nosy parker at heart. This little path doesn't look particularly over. I'm not quite sure why the app hasn't sent, sent through here then, because this isn't particularly overgrown. I guess it'll get quite muddy in winter time. Funny little setup this road with this in the middle of it. Maybe every road should have something like this. Crossing over Waveney Avenue now, continuing along Falcon Avenue, and I think I'll continue uh, through the footpath because it isn't too overgrown once you get in there. Very interesting thing though. Falcon Avenue split into two bits. Uh, it's not one way on each side, you know, one way on each side either. It's two separate and drive in both directions on both parts of it. Well, this middle bit was, and why it's there. In parts, it looked like there used to be some sort of stream down the middle of it, just to the right here, but I can't see anything at the moment. Probably be dried up now anyway. Can't really see it down there, but... Um, I reckon there used to be a stream run, run down there. Which is why the road has developed the way it has on each side. If there was a stream down there, it's uh, it dried up a very long time ago, I think. Right, turning... Uh, Turning off from this rather interesting road, Falcon Avenue, and this centre centre section it does definitely look like it does definitely look like a stream continues on up there as well, under underneath the road. I'll have to Google that later, see what I can find out. Right, uh, this probably is getting up to the highest point on, the, on this walk. Since the town seems to have been constantly going uphill. So presumably we're constantly going downhill now all the way back. Now, um, just to my right, on the other side of these houses, there's some woods with walks going through them. Uh, the app's not sending me in there, probably because I've not requested a sufficient amount of distance. I 
imagine if I'd added another kilometre or so into the, the walk I put in the app, then uh, it may well have added that in. I don't know, that's for another day. Can't actually see how you get to those woods from here, but there's definitely walking paths, so I can see them on the map. Just walking over the highest point in Bedford here and uh, the highest point on this walk I appear to start going downhill again now and uh, you can't really see it past these houses but you get little glimpses over onto the town to my left there and uh, <laughs> strangely it looks high up I know we're not exactly in the Lake District or the Peak District here or anything like that but it does seem relatively high although Bedfordshire is an extremely flat county so um, anything above of a molehill does tend to look quite high. Anyway, just down the bottom of this, this road, Curlo or Cur Curlew, something like that anyway, taking a right and heading towards the woods, which is good news. Just walking up Brickhill Drive now. The, the app's taking me off Brickhill Drive into the woods uh, for a bit of a deviation away from the road, although we'll come back to Brickhill Drive further along. the back of the houses I mentioned that showed it as woods but actually it's um, very large allotments good to see a lot of rules and regulations pinned on the pinned on the fence goes on down these little this little back road we've got CCTV cameras up there one can only speculate I suspect it's not people pinching cucumbers scout hut just here tell it's a scout hut just by looking at it. Is it a scout hut? Yes it is. <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah, so I had a bonfire recently by looks of things. Yeah. Nice place for a scout hut. interesting little detour back to Brick Hill Drive now and cross straight over and continue on a footpath back down towards the town well past the halfway mark now I'm sure this um, the app did say it would take me one hour and 37 minutes but I have stopped and dawdled about in various places I think it's going to be nearer to two which is what I was aiming for. This is uh, Cemetery Hill, apparently, and uh, there is a cemetery there. I shan't be walking through there, although um, important to note, as I've just seen the sign, there are some more graves in there, along with everybody else that's uh, ended their journey there. Well, that's as steep a hill as you're going to find in Bedfordshire, I think, on the whole, and certainly in Bedford. Um, it's quite steep, great for whizzing down on your bike. Anyway, the app is telling me to take a right turn here, down here, so that's where I shall go. It's 
to my left here, uh, over there, is the Hill Rise Nature Reserve. I'm not being, not being um, sent through there, but I guess I could go in there if I wished. Since we're just going through a housing estate now. Slade Walk next to some sort of uh, school sports pitch. A bit of cricket going on over there this morning. Must be a posh school because they're all uh, they're all kitted out in proper cricket whites and uh, even blazers over there. I I'm walking right the way through the facilities of Bedford Modern School. Starting to enter back into the town of Bedford properly now after a little uh, wander around Brick Hill, Bedford Park and so on. Just be ambling through all the streets here back to uh, where I started. So, um, nearly two hours ago now. It was very interesting though, I was uh, very uh, intrigued to see where this walk, this particular walk would take me. And yeah, it's been quite a lot of it along roads here, housing estates, uh, but some interesting little footpaths along the way as well. Always nice to see something new. Bromham Road just ahead, the busy roads, but the, the app's actually, for some reason, is sending me down here to arrive on Bromham Road a slightly different way than carrying us straight on there. Um, what it does do, um, it doesn't necessarily give you the shortest route. It tends to give you the route with less traffic and so on, wherever possible, and, and particularly on footpaths onto public footpaths. Which is probably why it sent me around this little back street and out onto Bromham Road. Slightly further down. I'll need to cross over in a moment and uh, not gonna be on this road for very long. Take a little windy walk down the back streets back to Bedford Station. There's not an awful lot on this particular walk of uh, places to stop and have a drink or a cup of tea or anything. There's a couple of shops that we passed along the way and maybe there's a, a cafeteria or something in the park. I couldn't see it, but perhaps there is one in there. Uh, but at the beginning and, and the end in Bedford Town Centre itself, obviously there's uh, ample opportunities to grab yourself something. And onto Conduit Road, almost at the end now. I'm back to be back to the point where uh, we took a right turn just after starting. Well, I said we'll come back from the left later on. We're more or less back to that place now. And there you have it, back to Woburn Road. This is where I was um, just under a couple, two hours ago. I came up from Bedford Station and took a right turn down that road there. Thanks again to the Go Jauntly app. It's allowed me to uh, see some places in Bedford I've not seen for quite some time. And uh, also some new places that I've never been to, so. I can only be thankful for that. It's funny, isn't it? I'm walking straight back down the road. I've walked down this road many times, actually, this particular road. I've never noticed that uh, Italian church there before. I must have walked down here with my eyes closed, because it's quite big. Anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this walk around Bedford um, with the help of the Go Jauntly app. I found some places I've not seen before. 
and uh, if you like this video or want to see some others then um, click like or subscribe and it'll let you know when I upload some more I've got lots of different ones in the countryside in towns in cities different places around the world and a few other random bits and pieces so anyway have a good day hope you enjoyed this and I'll catch you again soon bye now